we use the passive voice all the time in talking about violence and men's violence against women. It's, we talk about how many women were raped in Los Angeles. When's the last time you heard somebody say how many men raped women in Los Angeles? And that's pervasive. And so that, that's one of the reasons why victim blaming is so pervasive because our linguistic, whole linguistic structure is set up to focus on the victims because literally at the level of sentence structure, we're erasing the perpetrator. And, and it, even, even, even some of the terminology that we use to talk about perpetrators, we say perpetrator, we say offender, we say um, suspect. And I appreciate and understand the need for that in a, in a, in a legal sense, in a law enforcement process. But in, a, in the sense of social change, by not naming the fact that it's men doing it, by using degendered language, it allows us to have a panel on rape when there's only two men. So Jody? So yeah, I would say the same too with some of the issues I've been working with, which are rape in the military and then rape as a tool of war. And so much we worked for many years, we're now nine years into trying to change the laws that affect women in the military. And um, I was recently at Sundance, the film festival, and they showed The Invisible War. And as I was talking to everyone after, what I saw was everyone talked about what happened to the men. No one could really, that was the thing that made people listen or shocked or it, maybe it was the thing they could talk about. But um, so much of what happens is it, it's an uncontrollable moment that continues to reverberate to the listener. And so if you bring that uncontrollable moment up in a story, they feel powerless. And in that space of powerlessness, how do we tell the story that gives them a sense of power to relate to it? This happened in the Occupy, uh, the very first rape at the Occupy in New York. What happened was, you know, here's this great space, everybody's in a space of love and freshness, and all of a sudden it's getting cold, and they put up tents, and the guys have tents, and some, the women enter the tents, and immediately there's a rape. And because here's this fresh, burgeoning community of hope, how does that woman move from that space to reporting a rape was a, a really horrendous day of work with all the women. And then to have the cops come up and, and be violent to her about her telling the story that she didn't tell it right away. So there's so many ways when the most powerful person telling the story is the person of the story because it, it touches you in the deepest place, it's also a very risky place to be telling a story from. I, I want to answer the question as well, because I feel I've asked all of you to talk about words, and I, I, someone's got to represent you know, media, if you will, so I'll, I'll take that. And I think you know, we are limited in some ways, but I think we certainly can be much more intelligent and sympathetic and understanding about how we do it. You know, you get the story on the air, got to get it on really quickly. You can't get everyone to talk to you about it. So you're limited in the information you have to tell the story. How often do we cover rapes? Not really that often. I think the only time, and I can, I'll talk about television. You know, I think the only times we really cover rapes is either in connection with another incredibly brutal crime, such as a murder, if there is a serial rapist, because then everyone gets very nervous, very tense, and we become part of that. And then I think the other time we, we talk about it is... A celebrity. High yes, profile cases. A celebrity, a high profile individual. Like, you know, the case we had in New York at the hotel with the right. head of the monetary fund. You know, the most prevalent types of rape are almost never reported in the media. Oh, absolutely. It, you're only, the only time you're gonna report a rape is a, you know, a rape murder or a, or a stranger rape mm -hmm. or a high profile accused person. So you know, one of my answers to Suzanne's question is that the story of rape is not told in the media. Mm -hmm. It is told in, in dramatic yeah. television. Well, that's um, and there are problems with that, that too. And what's yes. striking, I, was, I, I looked at how date rape, acquaintance rape, was portrayed in television shows over the course of 20 years. And in the early 1990s, it was treated on a number of shows, a lot of them aimed at teenagers, but in prime time, it was treated seriously, at length, from the victim's perspective. It emphasized the aftermath of the rape. It emphasized the, the difficulty, but the importance of reporting the rape. After that, after that story got old, rape became a plot device. 
it was often used in, it was always an averted rape, and it was often used in a, in a kind of budding romance. So boy meets girl, boy rescues girl from rapist, boy gets girl.